All right. Starting the sixth call now, the sixth wharf kit call, or just wharf. My usage of these words is still not cemented in my head. Um, just briefly, kind of what we're going to touch on today uh, is the blog post that went live. Uh, for those that may have not seen Telegram or have seen it on Twitter or wherever else we've shared it so far, uh, we'll go over that kind of quickly. Um, where it's at, how we hope to engage developers using that, and then move into this discussion that's going on into Telegram about uh, potential reprioritization based on uh, just observations within the community at this point. So those are kind of the two major things I wanted to touch on today and make available in the videos like this, so that way everybody watching at home instead of involved in chats can also keep up on this kind of stuff. So um, starting with the blog post that was published yesterday, uh, it is on warfkit.com. It is currently the first post there, although this video will become that post here soon. Uh, but there, if you dig through the blog, you'll be able to find this it's a technical preview of the session kit. Um, this post, just to kind of summarize it quickly, is a introduction to the session kit, kind of what it is, how it applies to traditional web development and like the concepts it takes and tries to kind of bring um, those ideas towards what we're considering to be Web3. Um, sessions are very much a Web2 concept, but we can use them in Web3. It's just your session now will not authenticate against somebody's backend service, but instead authenticates against a blockchain to allow you to perform actions. Um, this blog post also goes through kind of introductory usage, as well as what the components of the session kit are. Um, all of this code is usable as of today. Everywhere throughout the article, it talks about how this is for version 1.1 or 0.1.1, um, just so that way, hopefully, if people stumble into this blog post in three months or a year from now, they'll realize it's probably out of date. So this is not a guide, a permanent guide. It is meant to be more of just this preview to get developers excited and potentially using it today. And one of the big reasons we want to try to do that is for feedback. Um, both feedback in how it functions, which I think will be the lesser amount of the feedback, and more feedback about how this plugin system works, um, specifically the transact plugin section. This is kind of uh, the thing that our team has always wanted out of the JavaScript solutions we've had. Um, EOSJS, for example. Like, in order for us to do some of the more advanced things we've wanted to do, whether it be in Anchor or in Unicove or any of our other applications, using EOSJS, what we've had to do is actually just take the code out of EOSJS, re-implement it in our application, and then modify it. That was the really the only approach we could take to be able to modify how our applications perform transactions. And the, I think the biggest and most prominent use case of that is to provide resources for people who want to um, perform transactions, whether that's you know free, and we're just saying, he, hey, here's a free transaction, you know, go for it, or whether we are prompting for some kind of fee that um, you know, will cover the resource costs, uh, CPU, net, and RAM, and we'll just let the user proceed on by accepting this fee rather than having to stop, go power up, go rent from Rex, go stake resources, go buy RAM, all these other things that like users just really get kind of baffled by and shouldn't have to deal with. Um, so we built the first plugin, which uses this early version. Uh, it's already seeing some new iteration in version 0.2. Um, so this will be out of date relatively soon, but it'll be very similar to this. But looping back to the feedback section, this is where we want a lot of the feedback, um, both in uh, the usage of it, like if you're writing a backend script that's a price oracle or something, um, and you use this, and it just works great, and it provides resources through the plugin architecture, cool. Uh, if you have problems with it, we want to know that. And then specifically, we want to see what other people can come up with in terms of plugins. Like what other steps could be done 
in a plugin to modify the behavior of the, like executing a transaction that uh, might not work within the current framework we have. So the blog post goes into how to implement it, talks a little bit about how it works, uh, the future and where it's heading, and then provides some links to the Telegram channel where we've been talking about this, uh, all the GitHub repos that are involved in this article, and uh, hopefully will be kind of an exciting development for the application developers in the space that have experienced these problems and are looking forward to a solution. So um, yeah, that kind of encapsulates this blog post that came out. Uh, also highlights the new blog section of the website. I think I just admitted Jesse. Yep, there he is. Um, yeah, Sorry, so that's all good. I was just briefly recapping what this blog post was for those that are going to be watching this video and may not have seen it. So yeah, the other half of this call is really kind of more of a discussion um, that has been going on in Telegram about this kind of reprioritization. And I wanted to just kind of both, like I'll start off just by presenting the situation and then discussion, uh, maybe what the next steps are. If this is a route we want to go, I plan on bringing this up, depending on this conversation, but I plan on bringing it up in the coalition call again tomorrow and saying, you know, like there's been support for this idea. Is this something the coalition's comfortable doing? Um, because it'll impact milestones and payment schedules. And like, it's just, it, it's not a drastic change, but it is a shift in direction. And a, it's not what we originally committed to doing, but we think it's, well, at least I think, and my team seems to agree with me based on the conversations I've had, is that it, it's a reactive way to um, alter the ordering of the project to meet the needs of developers today. So I know I'm giving way too much context without describing what I'm talking about. So I'll get into that now. Um, the way that this project was originally set up, um, we had, I think, 70 or 80 individual like line items of things that we needed to complete in order to build what we would consider to be this full SDK suite of Wharf. Um, as the project got closer to being approved, one of the things we had to do was kind of compress that into milestones. So we came up with 11 milestones, you know, we reduced from 80 down to 11, and we tried to order them in the way that made the most sense at that time. Um, it admittedly, I'm not great at this type of organization and looking in retrospect, um, the way that the milestones were laid out probably could have been a little bit better. Um, and so the second milestone, the one that we've been working on, we're already past due. It, we, we said we'd be done in like mid-December and turns out that this is more intertwined with a lot of other things than we had anticipated. Uh, we've already started on milestones two, three, four, and seven or something like that. Um, but milestone two was to create all three kits, which the three kits of Wharf are the session kit, which is what this article is about. You can see there's significant progress there, as well as the account kit and the contract kit. In comparison to what developers have had today. Um, the session kit is the equivalent to both EOSJS and UAL. It is the, it's the thing that front-end developers use to both perform transactions and integrate with wallets. Um, the contract and account kits are new things that don't, they don't have equivalents already in the ecosystem. So this created a situation where we have the session kit, which deprecates and kind of replaces these old tools and the account and the contract kits, which are just brand new, they don't replace anything. Um, we still, the, the ecosystem over the, since the year began really has brought up a number of situations where they're like, we still need to maintain this old stuff. Um, when is the session kit going to be available? And my answer kind of just immediately was like, well, we have to work on the account kit and the contract kit too. So we're kind of bouncing between the three. 
And that is kind of slowing down the replacement of um, the things that I think many people would like to get rid of. Um, so after having a number of these conversations, it was, I brought up maybe what we need to do is reprioritize the project in general to focus on the components that replace the old components. So that way we, we can get out of this kind of transition period and move into a period where we have the replacement. We can start talking about it, promoting it, iterating on it, and make one of these, specifically the session kit, more of a live product before the other two are completed. Um, this discussion has been kind of going on in Telegram for a little bit. There seems to be a lot of support for shifting in this direction as, you know, although, you know, there's something to be said about maintaining the original path the project was on. Um, but that's kind of uh, the fork in the road that we're at right now. It's, you know, do we continue to devote resources today, you know, like this week, next week, um, and the foreseeable short term future? to all three kits, or do we really just narrow down, focus on the session kit and get that out first, putting all of our you know, resources into that so that way we can deprecate the older tools sooner, um, or do we continue to work on all three at the same time? So it's kind of the decision to be made. It'll ultimately come up to not me, but the coalition. Um, and I mean, I think, based on all of the messages and everything I've seen so far, and the opinion I have formed is that it'd be a smart move to go that route. Um, we can focus the website on it. We can focus the development team on it. We can focus uh, some of the other external, like the documentation and tutorials and everything on that, as opposed to trying to do all three at once. And then obviously we still want to do all of these components. The overall price of the project doesn't change. Um, and those will just come out at a later date. So it's kind of where I'm standing, but I kind of want to do bring that up on the call, fill in whoever may be watching this in the future, and then have a conversation if anybody has any feedback they haven't already shared. Kind of flip-flopped in the beginning, just because I know how project management goes and I don't like introducing change uh, into plans that are set up in cooler with cooler minds but i think that most of us are really anticipating these especially this library because it replaces a lot of the functionalities that we're having to use in web apps right now uh, we don't want to compound backwards efforts of documentation or tutorials or just usage of those libraries uh, in the near future i think also that the other two kits compound on top of this kit to provide other functionality so it's not like we're not getting something usable now at the cost of something uh, less usable. We're actually getting something usable now, and then we're going to get further and easier usability down the road, correct? Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. It's like the other kits will add on to this, but there's no dependency on those other kits, the contract and account kit, for the session kit. The session kit is, it's it's the bulk of the work in a lot of senses, and it is also um, kind of the base for those others to be used. You can use them all standalone, but um, the session kit, I think, is the one that is probably the most anticipated, and that really wasn't accounted for in the original um, project planning when we were doing milestones. It was like, we're just going to do them all. This sounds great. And now the reality is it's like, OK, maybe we need this one more. Um, and with how fast this industry moves, our gut is always to be kind of reactive. Uh, yeah. And so before we react and just shifted you know, and made this unilateral decision, we were like, we need to definitely discuss this, bring this up, and make sure that everybody's on board with this shift so we're not going off script essentially i think the one of the other bigger aspects here is that we have to have some kind of testing phase with external developers and if we go and we're like hey you know we're entering a beta phase or an alpha phase of this why don't you go test it out we're not we're not releasing it yet but we're going into testing we're probably going to have really low buy-in of that 
And I think that if we just go, hey, here's what we have right now, we're going to iterate on this, but this is a, a released product as of right now, go use it. That'll probably have a lot more buy-in. Yeah, I tend to agree. And the reality of the situation is, is that what everybody's using today is arguably a beta product. It kind of was released and then never updated for years. It's an unmaintained beta product. Is yeah. The worst kind of beta product. Yeah. UAL, I mean, it was a labs product that uh, saw some updates early on and then just kind of everybody's been using it since, but it hasn't been touched since. So with, because none of that stuff, the UAL side of things isn't ready yet, correct? Correct. That is, it's coming up quickly. Um, but in our current trajectory, like where with where the session kit is, my current plan was to kind of shift off and help on the contract and account kits. Um, and the kind of, and then we would be working on the UI elements in, I don't know, a couple weeks, maybe a month from now. Um, but with this kind of proposed change, it would be, okay, now I am going to start on it and I am going to pull people off of the account and the contract kit to come help with the session kit, just to accelerate it that much faster. What kind of just like ballpark range uh... As time estimate, would you give to that? Um, to having the session kit in a place where it's like semi ready, like a MVP. Yeah. Um, couple weeks, maybe a month ish or more. Um, I think the original estimates we did were that it would take something like 12 weeks of developer hours. So if we develop multiple developers to it, then maybe we could compress it down into like a month. Uh, that is barring any you know unseen circumstances, but we, we've done this once before. We're, the, UI, the UI portion of all of this is basically us kind of taking what we've learned both from UAL and from AnchorLink, the Anchor SDKs, and taking that UI side out of things and pushing it into the session kit. So what would this actually include? Are, are we talking about like a React uh, component here? Uh, or would it be it, something that's just embeddable standalone, doesn't matter what you're putting it into? Embeddable standalone, it wouldn't matter what you're putting it into. Uh, we don't want to pigeonhole developers into specific frameworks. Awesome. So we. We've kind of looked at web components, the like the kind of new standard for reusable UI stuff. Um, but at this point, like we may just write the library to use JavaScript to generate the DOM and inject it and try not to meander into technologies that they themselves may cause roadblocks, you know, like right. that unfamiliar world. Um, so there are there are going to be potential improvements we can make to how the UI is handled within the session kit. But for now, the plan kind of seems like we're just going to build like a small UI templating engine that should work in any framework and any browser that supports JavaScript, really. Thumbs up for that. Awesome. Um, were there any other thoughts, comments on this? Is there any concerns? I, th I think from a project management standpoint, um, I mean, I think it sounds like you put a lot of thought into this. Um, and, and it's important to also, you know, under, you know for, for everybody to understand that um, products don't always follow the initial path and, and that there's going to be changes. and. Um, you know, uh, you, you've put the right amount of thought and, and effort into coming up with a new uh, proposal, a new plan, and a uh, way to carry forward. So I think that's uh, that's awesome that, uh, uh, you know, you're able to kind of keep that momentum going. Um, because as, as you mentioned, you know, to maintain on the current path, uh, you know, the, the project overall may not be as successful. Uh, so I think there's a lot of value in, in what you're proposing. I think that's great. Awesome to hear. And I, I know it kind of, 
it complicates things, but sometimes, you know, quote unquote, doing the right thing does complicate things. And in this, in this industry, like we've, our team has always had to react to conditions, you know, like when power up came out and we had to devote a pretty significant amount of effort into like, how do we improve the user experience in our products now that was not accounted for, but it was us reacting to the current market. Um, and with all these external parties at this point, like we're all building up this new kind of antelope ecosystem. And uh, based on what everybody else is working on, this is kind of a reactionary method to that broader feeling that's going on right now, like what everybody else is up to. We certainly didn't know what everybody else would be up to you know, in quarter one of this year until a couple of weeks ago, really. <laughs> so yeah, that's great to hear. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this idea goes over pretty well. Um, it feels like the right decision. And when it feels that way, it typically makes it even more exciting to kind of push harder on it. Not that that is necessarily a depending factor, but it's always good to be able to be like, oh, this is good. This is an exciting change. Let's give it even more. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense that you're not not fighting against the grain. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm distracted. I'm very happy with this. Very, very happy. If this is the direction the coalition decides to go with. Yep. Agreed. And if it's well, not, I, if I support it, just throwing that out there. I think you know that from conversations, but yeah i haven't spoken up i just want to say i support it i i would love to get everything on the new rails as soon as possible yeah that that really feels like a common theme right now so if we can make this shift and make that happen sooner uh it's a big win in my book so hopefully in others as well and it sounds like it will be So yeah, I mean, I guess from kind of a, a procedure standpoint, um, I guess I'm planning on leaving a message in the coalition channel to potentially bring this up as a topic for discussion tomorrow. I know I could just interject in the conversation, but maybe it's good to have some forewarning. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on other things that may need to be done, uh, either from a, a politics standpoint, if we want to call it that, or from a procedure standpoint, a project management standpoint, a marketing standpoint, anything like that? I know we're kind of all in uncharted waters. This coalition is, it's not new, but it's still lots of unknowns. I would like to uh, potentially have some kind of marketing push around this. Um, I'll take that over to, sadly, everybody's in an offsite right now from, from the marketing, the ENF marketing team. Um, so when they get back, I'll bring this up in our next meeting. Cool. Yeah, we can coordinate something on our side as well, depending on what we think is a good move to go in that direction. Cool. Adam, did you have something you wanted to add? or? No, no, I'm. Uh, All right. I, I think it, it, it sounds like you know you put a lot of thought into this. Um, um, I, I don't know if you have like a, a formal presentation that you're going to put together for the coalition. If uh, we need to have the floor, um, uh, you know, you say if you're going to change around some of the priorities and some of the the milestones that you're working on, um, have, have that kind of plotted out, uh, just to kind of throw it and, and kind of present to the, the group, um, just to help kind of support the the arguments. All right. Yeah. I asked because I saw you on mute, so I wasn't trying to put you on the spot or anything. Um, no, I think one of the things we talked about this yesterday on our dev call was that we have that project and milestone spreadsheet, uh, which is currently sitting at version three, which is where we're operating under today. And maybe I will create a version four just so that way there is a a way for you to compare version three to version four and how it impacts um, the schedule and uh, potentially the 
reordering of the milestones and payments and things like that. So I think that'll be good for uh, for those that are familiar with that document to be able to see kind of an updated version of that. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And, and it also may help as well if, if the coalition has other questions um, just to kind of uh, support the arguments and you can kind of you know have, have it clearly displayed. Here's the changes that you're putting forth and then where the impacts will be and it just gives a good uh, a, a visual cue to the to the changes. Yeah. Cool. Well, if there are other ideas surrounding this kind of shift, uh, I'm very open to them. We don't obviously have to work through it all on this call, but you guys know how to get a hold of me and hopefully everybody in the community does as well. Um, so we're open to that. Hopefully we'll get, this video will actually be published later today. I honestly have no idea how many people watch these, but um, hopefully that number will grow. <laughs> so um, in terms of other topics, I don't necessarily have a ton of other topics to discuss. I'm happy to dive into kind of some of the code stuff if there's just general Cody topics we want to talk about or just kind of have open anything wharf kit or wharf. I need to stop saying kit. Question for you. Um, yeah. I, I also say wharf kit. <laughs> Seems more, un I don't know if it's unique or, or singular. Yeah. It fits more. Um, but I have a question related to the, the project now versus the project with uh, UAL support the quote unquote solidified first version of an MVP is barring the actual UAL style support is the rest of the library going to stay the same from what you think? Yeah, yeah, I don't think any of the like the architecture or code base has to change a whole lot. Um, we've kind of designed it all with this UAL like layer in mind. Um, some of the O.2 changes that I've been working on over the past couple of days um, are related to that. It's this, there's this, the transact context object that is passed around for utility during a transaction uh, being executed. Um, and we're kind of starting to add developer friendly features onto that to be able to quickly access things. And that's going to be what controls the user interface from the perspective of a function, whether it be in a plugin or in the session kit itself. So uh, from a developer's perspective, if they're using the UAL-like approach, they'll be using uh, the session kit itself, and they'll be calling a login. And then it's going to give you a session. Whereas if you're not using the UAL-like method, you will just manually create a session. Like they'll they'll be interchangeable. And if you learn to use one, you can use it in both places. You know, It's just a matter of how that session is initialized. Is there possibly a way that you guys could tag it? If everything goes well and we go this route, is there possibly a way that you could tag it with the local only support before getting started with UAL? And I'm only saying UAL because we have no other name for this yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what do you mean tag it with local only? Right, right now you have like, a, it would be in ESJS where you just have a software key inside of the client browser. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, there's still a couple things that you want to do before starting the, the front end, the UAL stuff. Yeah, there are some improvements we can make. I mean, I mean, it, I think it's usable today with the, you know, when you put a key in to the script manually. Um, I guess I'm still not following. I, I guess the real, the, I'll, I'll stop beating around the bush. The <laughs> question is, can I take it today and create tutorials with it? Uh, or will I be feeling pain in a couple months having to redo like videos and stuff? There may be some slight things that change, uh, like, just today, I think I renamed one of the parameters. Um, and that obviously wouldn't be super hard to change in documentation. It might be if you mentioned that variable or that parameter name in a video, that is a lot harder to edit out. Um, 
But I mean, if we can try to focus in on uh, like a feedback round, we could potentially lock that down um, and be like, these are the parameters that we're planning on going with. We're not going to rename them, uh, barring any, you know, there may be situations where we have to, but yeah. um, we could try not to. Um, okay. That gave me my answer. Cool. I guess we'll we'll probably get a little bit just until uh it's all solidified and then we'll we'll start testing it internally and right have the feedback for you. I think awesome. we probably want the larger feedback loops than just you know the ENF testing out this library. Yeah. Yeah, I'd really like to get some of the community developers starting to use it in a product of some way and then just get whatever feedback may come out of that. Um, I'll be pounding on that war drum over the coming week or two just to really try to put some visibility in that and be like, hey, like, I don't know, if you're going to write a script that does something, like, use this, give it a try, and then tell me, tell us what's good, what's bad, what you want changed, what it can't do. Um, just so that way we can really hone in on what a session is while we then build the session kit on top of it that acts as UAL, essentially. Gotcha. Cool. Any other questions, topics, anything we want to bring up? If not, this will be a, the shortest call yet. Nothing wrong with that. This is actually the first time we've done back-to-back, week-to-week calls. <laughs> Very productive calls. Yeah, I'd like to think so. I, I have gotten a lot of good insight out of these calls um, that then I pass back to the team or I work on myself and the outside perspective is super important as we're building this tool that everyone will hopefully be using. Cool. That's awesome. I hope we can keep doing this weekly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then I hope we don't have to do it weekly because it'll be so awesome. We don't need to do it weekly anymore. Yeah. Well, and maybe at that point, you know, when we have a real version out, then we kind of open these up to the public and it becomes kind of a reoccurring thing like the the oper the nodios operators roundtable happens every right. week you know like if we can get uh like a javascript developers roundtable going where we can talk about things like this then thumbs up like i'm all for it can we call it wharf sit <laughs> yes yes we can <laughs> can we listen to that song sitting by the dock of the bay yeah, absolutely. We'll get some AI generated music or something. <laughs> It'll make all of our brains hurt. Cool. All right. Well, we can uh, wrap this one up here. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. And uh, we will do it again in a week or two. Catch you guys later. Thanks a lot. Right. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Later, guys. Bye.